In this video, I fully 3D print a keyboard. And that means all the parts. The case, the keycaps, the plate, the switches, and even the stabilizers are all gonna be 3D printed. All except the PCB because I don't really know how to do that one. Now in my last video, some of you may have recalled that I said this. Now you see, I could just call it a day and just say that this is my DIY cyberboard, you know, 3D printed keyboard. And then it dawned on me. I could just make a 3D printed keyboard video and call it a day. And that's why we're here. So in this video, I'm going to 3D print a key- Wait, I already said that. So I first started off by modeling all the 3D parts that I could. And yeah, so here are the 3D models that I came up with. The case, the plate, the stabilizers, the switches, and the different keycaps. See, 3D modeling is actually a very, very long process. And it's actually very boring. And I kind of wanted to speed things up by using a new technique that I found. So we're actually going to be using this. See this small black dot over here? This is actually called a LiDAR scanner. It can actually process depth information and it comes with every new iPhone Pro, starting with the iPhone 12. This actually allows the iPhone to do a bunch of things and one of the new things is actually the cinematic mode which everybody's using. Now honestly, I couldn't really care less about the cinematic mode. I mean, I have this camera. Because the LiDAR can actually do so much more than just cinematic mode. And it can actually do this. So with the LiDAR scanner, you can actually map 3D information and even objects. The video you just saw is actually a 3D projection of my entire room done on the iPhone with the LiDAR. I mean, how cool is that? So with this, I thought I could just use the phone, scan maybe a, you know, a switch and then it will be 3D. Just that it didn't really work. I mean, it didn't work at all because you see the switches and the keycaps are way too small for the LiDAR to even work. And I just spent four days on my own just 3D modeling it myself. I wanna die. So after modeling everything, here comes the 3D printing process. And the process actually took really long with a lot of failed attempts and I kinda got really tired while doing it. It took so long in fact that I actually grew a mustache while waiting for it. And that's a great segue to today's sponsor. Oh hi there! I'm Farmer John. A full-time, lifelong farmer. Say, being a farmer, it's very important to have the right tools to trim your bushes and the grass. Oh! And that's why I use Manscaped. Manscaped! Manscaped sent me the Performance Package 4.0. Your balls will thank you. No, you will thank you. It comes with the Lawnmower 4.0, an electric trimmer with advanced skin-safe technology, reducing cuts and nicks on your body. And it's even waterproof, so you can take it wherever you want, whenever you want. It charges wirelessly with a wireless charger included, and even has a travel-safe lock for safe transport. Manscaped! The Crop Reserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner makes sure your balls always smell good and are always fresh. Manscaped! And the Weed Wacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. With the same skin-safe technology as the Lawn Mower 4.0, you won't have to worry about hurting yourself. Landscape. But for a limited time, you can get all this plus two free gifts. The Shed Travel Bag and the Manscaped Brief. Man! Get 20% off plus free international shipping if you use code SQUASHY at manscaped.com. Manscaped. Always use the right tools for the right job. Alright, so we're back and here are the final parts. So I didn't actually print the case and the plate because they are a bit too big for my 3D printer so I actually outsourced them. Also because it would have taken 6 years for me to print. So the case is actually printed out from an orange PLA plastic material. The plate on the other hand is actually printed from a grey PLA material. So it's plastic. I also printed out a bunch of stabilizers which are PLA, so plastic. And at the time of modeling, I thought it would be pretty cool to have the wires printed out in plastic as well. So PLA. And I kind of regret it because they are really scratchy. The keycaps on the other hand actually turned out really, really nice. Like they fit onto the keyboard like it's nothing. They sound like real keycaps. They're printed from a PLA material, so plastic. Moving on to the switches however, or I mean switch. Uh, I only printed one. So the switches turned out to be way too small for my 3D printer to print accurately and there were some missing parts because my 3D printer couldn't print that small of a line. And the parts it actually managed to print were so weak that the moment I put it together, the thing just broke. Uh, hold on, this is kind of my fault because I didn't model the model too well so it kind of turned out like this. So yeah, unfortunately, as much as I really want to use 3D printed switches, we're going to go back to our good old Gidron yellows. So yeah, with all the parts printed out, all that's left to do is to assemble the keyboard together. So yeah, let's, let's do that. Uh, you know, we can not do that. Yeah, I'm kind of tired. I haven't slept for like five days. So we first start with the stabilizers. I actually modeled them based off the Durock stabilizers, so they look pretty much the same. But I couldn't print screw holes, so we're going to be mounting them with double-sided tape. After which we'll move on to the plate, which then comes the first miscalculation. Oh, shit. Wait, it's not the right size. 
Indeed, it wasn't the right size because I actually went three millimeters off the actual measurement. So yeah, to fix this, I actually just snipped off a bit of the keyboard and also snipped it into half. But yeah, now it fits perfectly. After which I attached on the switches. And after getting all the switches on, we move on to mounting it. So there wasn't really any screw holes for mounting the keyboard together, so I ended up just using one of those sharp-headed screws which are armor-piercing and probably incendiary and just bolted the case and PCB together. And yeah, with everything bolted to the case, now it's just the keycaps. The keycaps were actually really simple. There were only four layers of keycaps and there wasn't really much confusion. At the time of filming this, I was actually missing one of the keycaps. It was the key below the backspace. Oh, this face was sucks. And then I added some finer detail. Okay, let's see whether I can remember this. So I decided it would be a good idea to label all the keycaps. And after labeling all of them, here is how the final keyboard looks like. So this is the final 3D printed keyboard. The keyboard comes with a GMK, handwritten, you know, only the highest quality here at the Squashy Boy. It's interesting that this only weighs 512 grams as compared to a traditional custom keyboard. Oh, for you Americans, it's uh, really light compared to 165 pounds. See, I think this keyboard is a pretty cool concept, but here comes the deciding factor, you know, the part you've all been waiting for. How does the keyboard sound? And yeah, that is my 3D printed keyboard. So from my previous video, a bunch of you guys actually asked whether I could drop the 3D model in the description so that you guys can print it yourself. So all the files are actually provided down below. I didn't actually model the keycaps myself because that would have taken too long. So I used some models online. You guys can check them below, you know, the respective owners. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Check out my previous video where I turned a keyboard into an RC car. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also drop a comment down below of literally anything. It helps me beat the dreadful YouTube algorithm. And yeah, as always guys, 